Merlin is a project that deals with the restoration of freshwater ecosystems, for example peatlands or small streams or large rivers. Merlin will implement a lot of restoration measures, but probably more important, it will develop strategies and methods how to apply these methods much more commonly in Europe. Merlin is funded under the Green Deal by the European Union and the consortium involves research institutes but also many implementation partners, for example water wars, sports or NGOs. Well, freshwater ecosystems cover only a very small part of the Earth's surface, so they are much smaller than, for example, forests or the sea. But they provide, obviously, essential services to humans. Water, of course, drinking water, water for agriculture, for irrigation. But they are also among the main um, stores for carbon. So a lot of carbon is stored, for example, in peatlands. And rivers, for example, they well, provide also a lot of retention capacity. Natural rivers uh, can store a lot of water that prevent floods. And yeah, finally, also very important, freshwater ecosystems are among the most species-rich habitats on Earth. Freshwater ecosystems are probably one of the most um, polluted ecosystems, one of the most degraded ecosystems, because they are, well, functioning literally as sewers of, of the society. And, um, well, since we have that saying, water is life, um, we need to take care of such ecosystems in the first place to allow the Green Deal to become a success story. Well, first, I think we have to state that there are many projects, many good projects also, uh, for restoring freshwater ecosystems under Life Plus, for example, or under the Water Framework Directive. But there are some frequently reoccurring problems. One is that, well, most of these restoration measures are implemented by water managers. And water managers, they are, as well the name implies, they are responsible for water, while a lot of the stressors, they originate from the adjacent land. So the connection of restoration of water and of the catchment, uh, this is a big challenge. Then second, many of the restoration projects, they cover only a very small area. And this is often not sufficient to really well, initiate processes, for example, ecological or also geomorphological processes. And finally, currently, the, well, the restoration is mainly relying on public funding, almost entirely. While potentially there are many more, well, investors also interested in restoration, for example, um, also under the carbon trading. And that's something that has not yet lived up to its full potential and uh, something that urgently needs to be changed. Yes, we, we can capitalize on a lot of experience here. So, um, just to give you an example, for peatland restoration, the European Union has funded more than 300 projects just under the Life Plus project, and this will have crea created a lot of experiences. There are good examples in terms of size, so there are a few really massive restoration projects. There are examples where different individual smaller restoration measures have been very well connected. There are certainly also a lot of examples where restoration targeted one aim, but additional aims have been achieved at the same time. For example, it targeted biodiversity, but at the same time it provided a lot of carbon storage. So Merlin has selected some of these very good practice examples, altogether 17, and we will work very closely with these projects. I would say that Merlin is somewhere in between a research project and an implementation project such as the Life Plus project. So we will capitalize on 
on these 17 very large, very successful projects, we will monitor the effects and we will try to, try to draw some general conclusions uh, from these projects. But we will also spend about half of our budget for implementing additional measures attached to these large projects to upscale them also to adjacent areas. These case studies, they are spread around Europe. They are located in 15 countries from Finland to Bosnia and from Portugal to Israel. And we can basically categorize them into three major groups. So we have peatlands and wetlands. For example, large peatland restoration projects in northern Finland where abundant peat mining sites are being restored. Then we have um, plenty of projects related to smaller streams, usually several smaller uh, measurements in a catchment. An example might be from the Basque country where a lot of bears are being removed. And finally, we have a group of projects that are associated to large rivers, such as the Rhine or the Danube. An example is a large restoration program in Austria and Hungary, where a part of the Danube floodplain is reconnected to the river. Well, besides this very central part of Merlin with the 17 restoration cases, we will also look for a pan-European scale analysis where is future restoration feasible and cost-effective. Another aspect is to involve the economic sectors, understanding, well, potential synergies for restoration or also trade-offs or barriers, obstacles to restoration coming from individual economic sectors. And finally, we hope to make profound uh, contributions to the policy discussions around restoration, which are currently very urgent. We have four focal sectors, agriculture, so for example, organic farming and restoration of floodplains they have very much common interests. Then we are dealing with water supply. Well, uh, obviously clean water and restoration of rivers um, have some connection. We are dealing with navigation. Uh, there is this uh, very good example of the blue belt targeting the smaller navi navigatable rivers in Germany, which are step by step being restored. And then we are also dealing with the insurance industry. Uh, it's quite obvious nowadays that especially the, the water storage capacity is of great interest for the insurance interest industry to avoid floods and well to avoid a lot of costs being generated by the destruction through these floods. And then we, we have two economic sectors um, with whom we also co cooperate uh, Though we do not really expect um, common interests, this is peat mining and water power generation, which are much more assumed to be detrimental for freshwater ecosystems. On the other hand, I think there is um, uh, a lot we can do together with them, for example, to restore abundant peat mining sites and also to enhance sites where water power is generated and to increase biodiversity there. Well, it depends on the target group. I will focus on the so-called community of practice, which is very much in the focus of Merlin. So there are thousands of water managers and land managers around Europe that now and then have to deal with freshwater ecosystem restoration. For them, we will build a marketplace, which means basically that we will collect a lot of information also about companies, about investors, about projects that need investors, and try to connect them um, as much as possible. And we will create a training facility that we call the Merlin Academy. It will be a virtual training facility. And there we will collect um, a lot of information, a lot of training material about the technicalities of freshwater ecosystem restoration, but also about the 
potential benefits about the monitoring and in particular about financing options. Well, key achievement of Merlin will be the mainstreaming of restoration across Europe. And um, Merlin will do it by documenting the benefits of restoration and make it accessible to, to a broader audience. Um, it will showcase best practice of restoration and um, it will involve the economic sectors to create either win-win situations or to understand better which trade-offs are necessary to implement proper restoration across the continent. Merlin will furthermore advise policy in restoration questions um, and aims to connect the community of practice on the ground. So in the end, Merlin will provide an important source also for future generations of water and land managers for the restoration case to be lifted high up on the agenda.